So praying, it's our first work. The believer is exhorted to pray all the time. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 says, pray continually. And how do we do that? We do that in our mind and in our hearts as we walk, as we work, as we even lay down on the bed or whatever we're doing or we're going, we are called to um, pray continually. And then in Colossians chapter 2 verse, uh, chapter 4 verse 2 says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. The word devote means that we have to do it continually. Every time we are doing whatever we're doing, we ought to pray as well. Why it's praying in our first work? Because the believer is also challenged to grow in intimacy with the Lord. As Jesus was praying in uh, the uh, Garden of uh, Gethsemane, he says this word in Matthew chapter 26. Then Jesus said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. See, the disciples were called to have intimate, intimate relationship with the Father, but they fall asleep. But in the midst of this experience, Jesus is teaching them how to pray intimately with the Father. And the term, that, the word that he used uh, strikes me. He says, my soul is overwhelmed well, with sorrow to the point of death. That means that he was really connected with the Father. And so uh, there is another aspect of this uh, praying as our first work. The believer is commanded to pray to pray with perseverance. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 12 says, Be joyful in hope, patient in afflictions, faithful in prayer. And then finally, um, this discipleship that involves praying in order to accomplish our missions. Being prayer, our first work has to do with the believer as being commanded to pray for everything and for all. As we preach, as we teach, as we sing, as we do whatever we do in church setting and in discipleship, we ought to do it in prayer. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 that uh, we read before uh, says in verse 1, I urge then, first of all, that all petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for all people, all prayer, all petitions, all intercession, all. We are called to pray for everything and for all. So let me conclude here. There are three things that I want to leave in your um, mind and in your heart for you to meditate through this week. First of all, as a way of conclusion, Embrace the discipline of prayer by doing it. Not only think, not only know how to pray, but do it. Right now, wherever you are at, at home, or listening to this video, this preaching, pray. Secondly, constantly pray because that is our first goal. That should be our first goal every single day that we wake up in the morning and as we go to work and as we take lunch and as we go back work and as we go home remember we are modeling us as followers of Christ if you are a father if you are a mom if you are an older brother if you are uh, whomever you are in within the setting of your family you are modeling how to pray and we are exhorted, we are commanded, we are challenged to pray. And then finally, and this is one of the things that I always um, meditate on, when we pray, expect results. 
what are you praying for right now? Well, God may answer that prayer and praise his name if he answered it in the way you are praying it. But God may say no to you. And we are called to give him thanks still, even though he's not answering the way we expected. Or maybe he can say, let's wait. And maybe you're not ready uh, to receive what you're asking for. And a way of preparation may start right there on the spot for you. And up until you are ready to receive, then it will be granted to you. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. And as we meditate on this spiritual discipline that we call prayer, we ask you, Father, to continue to bless us and to continue to prompt us by the power of the Holy Spirit to be a church that prays all the time and that do her work through prayer. Father, I pray for the leadership. I pray for the pastors and those who are uh, in ministry right now. That you will continue to use us in a mighty way. That we will continue to be focused on our mission. And as we disciple, healthy disciples, I pray, Lord, that you will grant us the wisdom and the discerning as we pray together for growth, not only numerically, but also emotionally, spiritually, socially, academically, financially. Bless us as never before. We believe in results because we are praying to a God to the God, to the perfect one who knows everything and loves us so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.